you're now enrolled in the school of black negro jitsu <laughs> is it your first day don't worry the master Leroy Stephan and his co-instructors Dave, Mike, and Kyle will take it easy on you, rookie. Enroll in the School of Black Negro Jitsu right now. It's free. All you have to do. There's no hidden costs, no hidden fees. Hit that subscribe button on whatever platform you're on. iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play. Hit subscribe, get enrolled, and you'll get completely free access to all of our classes. That's the School of Black Negro Jitsu. That's our main mixed martial arts class. Then we also have our two fantasy classes, the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast and Black Market Picks. And we also have have other offerings at the school interviews other random things enroll now it's free guys welcome to the school of black negro jitsu class 16 i'm your host the master of black negro jitsu love rod stefan and today i'm joined by my co-host dave mark what's good dave Nothing, Leroy. Everything's great. Just uh, coming off a great weekend of, of scraps from uh, UFC to Miguel Cotto's last fight to EBI 14. So, you know, just getting ready to, to get the ball rolling on School of Black Negro Jitsu Class 16. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a lot on tap for you today. We got a Tia Ball Guti interview. Very interesting. That's the first Frenchman I've had on the show. Been waiting to do a French uh, podcast for ages now as I speak French. Um, we also have Albert Warrior Morales, who's going to be fighting this weekend on UFC Fight Night 123. Swanson versus Ortega. Great to talk to him, see where his head is at. I plan on having a lot of him on DraftKings after talking to him. Um, we're going to do the UFC 218 recap. Great fight card. Um, we're going to do the uh, UFC Fight Night 123 preview. And I guess, we did you watch Tough Finale 26 or not? Uh, I didn't. I didn't catch all of it. I caught some of the some of the fights. Um, once we start going down down the list of fights, I'll let you know uh, what I did and didn't catch because I actually don't even remember offhand. Um, I know I didn't catch the the last fight. I, I turned it off before the last fight, but I, I did catch some of the uh, some of the main card. Oh, okay. All right. So let's just start off with Tough Finale Twenty Six. Um, which was perfect for me on DraftKings. I would have had all the money. I had all the right picks. But a tragedy occurred during the prelims. Let's go over it. I had a whole load of Jillian Robinson over Emily Whitmire. Um, so I had the, the like the biggest key play of the night. First round submission by Armbar. I think there were like five Armbar finishes on this card. It like set a record or something like that. Then we had Shayna Dobson beating Ariel Beck in a back-and-forth fight. The better athlete won out. No uh, no surprise there. I really liked Ariel Beck in there. She had more experience. Um, next up, we had Rachel Ostovich, um, one, of the, uh, one of the top, I think, uh, prospective draws in the U UFC women's flyweight division. Very good-looking, very good as a fighter. Going up against Karine Gavorgian. Uh, submission by Armbar. That was the second Armbar tonight. Then what messed up all my DraftKings teams, Ryan Janes comes back. I mean, this is this is how sad this is. Ryan Janes didn't win because he's necessarily a great fighter. He didn't win because of any sort of techniques. He won because Andrew Sanchez got so tired whipping his ass that... Uh, <laughs> so... I, 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 <laughs> TKO tired, tired from whipping his ass. He was so I mean he whipped his ass so bad in the first round. I mean, it almost if they would have stopped the fight in the first round at any point after those three knockdowns, I think there were, people would have been like the stoppage wasn't soon enough. They kept letting the shit go. And sure enough, here comes Ryan James. And Andrew San Sanchez is so fucking tired from just beating his ass. I mean, it was ridiculous, you know, that uh, somehow Ryan James takes over in the second and finishes him in the third. And this completely ruined all my DraftKings teams. It should have never happened. Ryan James <laughs> really doesn't deserve to win. I mean, he's super tough. You got to give it to him for that. He got his ass kicked and he kept fighting. Got to give it to him for toughness. But, I mean, winning by way of fatigue due to somebody beating your ass is not, it's not <laughs> it. 
<laughs> so uh, this is actually one of the fights I did see, and I, I, I'm just gonna just gonna intervene here. And I don't know what it is about Andrew Sanchez. I don't know if he's just falling in love with his stand up. Um, but he looks night and day different from the same guy who beat Khalil Roundtree uh, in the um, the tough finale when uh, Joanna Joanna and uh, Claudia had their two teams. He he absolutely minimized all Khalil's stand up by wrestling him and really going to his wrestling background. Um, I don't know why he's gotten away from that. It's because it he like was it's... beating his ass. That's why. But, I mean, he beat seems, the shit it's... out of him. He got three it... takedowns too. If he would have won that fight in the first, he'd have scored like 150 points. It was ridiculous. But like, that's he... two fights. <laughs> that's two fights in a row. He's gasped from beating the shit out of somebody, and then well, got, I mean, you know got stop. When you're whipping somebody's ass, you got to pace yourself. It's it's actually not good to be that laps lopsided to fight because Khalil Browntree fight was competitive in a way. So Andrew Sanchez didn't get as tired. But when you're just dominating somebody and beating on them and looking for the finish, then you, if you're not careful, you'll gas out. So Andrew Sanchez has lost two fights by way of kicking somebody's ass so bad that he got tired and didn't have anything left. He just has to learn how to manage his energy better. That's all. I mean, Ryan James was in no way better than him on the ground, standing, just... Bad, you know, just bad luck, Lou. He was should have been trying to finish the fight. It should have been stopped, you know, but whatever. I guess that's the fight game, especially in mixed martial arts sometimes. Next up, we have Montella De La Rosa filling, uh, finishing off Christina Marks by another arm bar. Not shocking at all. Marks has been finished by uh, submission in her last seven or so fights. Brett Johns beats Joe Soto with a calf slicer. What? Uh, completely dumbfounded by that. I would never expect Joe Soto to be outdone in the area of lead locks, especially like that, especially by a calf slicer. What? Um, very impressive by Brett Johns. So, Deanna Bended and Melinda Fabian, terrible fight. Ends in a draw. I'm not even going to talk about that. Gerald Mearscart and Eric Spicely in a back-and-forth fight. Eric Spicely dominating the fight on the ground. Mearscart was able to keep it off the ground and keep it standing. Finish Spicely with a body kick. Spicely is coming along. He's looking better and better in each fight. He's a, he's a problem for whoever he's facing because his uh, his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu was top level. Lauren Murphy with a huge upset over Barb Hanchak, um, winning by split decision. I thought she deserved it. Lauren Murphy is a tough out for anybody. People need to quit sleeping on her. Made her that big of an underdog. She's never that big of an underdog. She's got top level grappling and striking and a huge uh. Work ethic and uh, gas tank. Sean O'Malley versus Terion Ware. This should have been a main event on a fight night. This is a really good fight. Back and forth. 29-28 um, uh, unanimous decision. I agree with it. Uh, had both these guys on the show, Sugar Sean and Terion Ware. I forget what uh, what class Sugar Sean is on. Is it like 12 or 11? I forget. But um, love talking to both of these guys. A great fight. That should have been a main event, though, for both those young up-and-comers. Terry on where it looked like he just gassed out from the pace he was pushing. Hard to push that pace against somebody who's in good shape like O'Malley. Great fight. Would love to see a rematch one day, but both of these guys have nothing to be ashamed of. It, it was awesome. Terry on where uh, he just needs an easier fight, I guess. He's a he's a he's a top level fighter. And uh, last off, Nico Montana takes the flyweight championship over Roxanne Mataferi. Um. One of uh, one of these two is uh, bound to get a uh, sacrifice to Valentina Shevchenko or somebody else, and looks like it'll be Montana. I hope they give her an easier fight, give her an Invicta girl or something like that. Don't throw it to uh, Shevchenko or in Jacek or anything crazy like that. She's not quite quite ready for that, um, but I think she has a bright future. Uh, she's going to continue to get better. Very. She only got six professional fights, you know. So I hope they take that one slow. And uh, keep that one pure. Maybe have her go up against Paige Van Zandt. Keep keep it keep it uh keep it in between people that have similar experience levels. Um, let's go on to UFC 218. We all watch this though. Um, this was a an awesome fight card. I uh man, I uh really enjoyed it from top to bottom, and um. I, uh, yeah, man, it was awesome. The only thing that went wrong for me here was my DraftKings teams 
and uh, that's about it. But uh, first fight of the night. What Dave? What did you think of the card overall? I thought the card was amazing. Uh, plenty of violence. Um, there was there, there was no real <laughs> boring fights I could think of offhand. Um, I, I I just top to bottom I agree. Uh, I thought it was a great card, and and there's definitely when we get into the fights, there's definitely some some takes that I'm gonna have that you may or may not agree with. So um, I'm just gonna let you get started and get into the fights. Oh yeah, let's get into it. Uh, Justin Willis, predictably at least to me, uh, finishes Alan Crowder. I think Alan Crowder, he's big, he's athletic, but man, is he sloppy. Justin Willis is a lot farther along in his development. And absolutely, uh, coming from AKA, he's got strong striking, strong wrestling. Put Crowder away within the first round. Dominique Reyes uh, was able to show us a different side of his game. Beats Jeremy Kimball by submission, rear naked choke in the first round. Jeremy Kimball didn't do that bad at all. I mean, he didn't get knocked out. I was expecting if he lost, he'd get knocked out. But he came in. Did he take Reyes' back at one point, Dave? Uh, I, I don't recall if he took Reyes' back or not, but uh, I, I forget. I, I think he took him down or something like that. Reyes gets up and it takes him down. It takes his back and chokes him out. But Kimball's not a scrub, man. He's not that athletic. That's the thing that'll be his stop him from ever being probably a champion. But he's a hell of a fighter. Reyes passed a tough test there um, and showed us that he's he's a complete fighter. So he's got a really bright future. I'm really gonna be excited to see things from him in the future. In the most controversial moment of the night, uh, Abdul Razak Al-Hassan, Al-Hassan, who we had on the show a couple weeks ago. Go check out the School of Black Negro Jitsu uh, library on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play. But we had him on against Saba Hamasi, uh, who it was revealed is an ex-stripper. Uh, used to make a <laughs> – uh, and then from what I understand is still, I know uh, some of his American top team teammates, he's still making a living as a stripper. But anyway, he got kind of robbed in this fight. He didn't get knocked out. He slipped or something, and he grabbed onto a single. It, and- it, it was it was um, it was something along the lines of, if I recall correctly, Al Razak Hassan was holding his head down, and yeah. it's something and- along those lines. And Herb Dean thought thought that he was out and called the fight. Um, it it, it kind of Dean- looked like he went out though the way mm-hmm. he fell, but I don't even think he got hit. I think he just fell. I think Saba Hamasi was on the way to winning that fight. Um, Al Hassan gets uh, kind of lucky there. Uh, Hamasi is a tough out, man, but he how, how he got robbed here. I like to see this be a rematch or something like that. Uh, Hamasi's got uh, he's he's not a, a pushover at all. My uh, I had him on my DraftKings place. Uh, I thought he was a really strong play. Amanda Bobby Cooper actually absolutely smashes on Angela Magano, who I don't even think is well. I guess she's a UFC level fighter, but I don't know. Maybe in one of those fight pass China cards against the debuting <laughs> Chinese Chinese fighter, or something like that. I, I don't think I saw, I don't think I collectively saw more people on Twitter happier in, in my entire life than when uh, Angela Magana got smashed by ABC. She uh, is the best heel in the business. They should have her on China cards <laughs> insulting people. I, I love it. She's uh she's a real bad girl. Everybody hates her. So yeah. Felice Herrick and Courtney Casey in the worst fight of the night. They were flicking each other off and cussing each other <laughs> out and not fighting each other. I don't know what that was about. In the next bout, Herb Dean continued to fuck up as he did in the Al Hassan fight, and uh he was uh he was uh, threatening to take a uh, a point from David Taymor in the Dracar close fight. I think Herb Dean might have smoked right before he went into the <laughs> octagon at night. I think maybe he, we should, maybe he smoked up with Sean O'Malley. Who knows? I, I think usually on fight nights, I think Herb Dean wakes and bakes. But apparently, uh, this fight night, he said "fuck it" and he was in the back vaping or something like that uh, because he was fucking up all night. I mean. Why does David Taymor have to come forward and, and do what Jacar Close says? I don't know. But uh, I think Herb Dean had the money he was, and was like, listen, motherfucker, I want some Cheetos. Let's get <laughs> let's get into this fight and get a knockout so I can get to the back. 
and feed my munchies habit, man. Um, I know Herb Dean smokes, man. He's got the dreads. He's got the. He looks like a smoke. I know he is. <laughs> anyway, Yancy Monteros up against Alex Oliveira. Um, in the fight of the night, I don't know where Yancy Monteros' defense was in the beginning of the fight, but eventually he found it and was able to finish. Uh, Cowboy Oliveira in the second round. Cowboy pushed too hard a pace in that first and second. Didn't have anything left in the third. Yancey Maderos put him away in an absolute barn burner. I thought Maderos was finished in that first round, but he came back. And I think uh, referee Bobby Wambacher, who we had on last week, he ref this fight. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, which was, uh, I think, one of two fight of the night candidates. Then we had Paul Felder versus Charles Oliveira. This went exactly as I, I expected. You know, if Charles Oliveira doesn't finish in the first round by submission, he always quits and gets beaten up and finished himself. That's just the way he does it. He's lazy. Well, he's not lazy. He just, when the going gets tough, Charles Oliveira quits. That's what he, that's what Charles Oliveira does. He, he just doesn't have that same work ethic that Paul Felder has. He, um, you know, he, he, he works hard, but when the fight starts to get tough and he starts to get beat up and shit, like he's not good. He wants out, you know? Like yeah, if, yeah. If he can't, if his jujitsu and working, you know, and he can't do what he wants, then fuck it. Like Charles Oliveira is <laughs> like, get the towel ready. Fuck, fuck this shit. Just knock me out. Like, yeah, fuck it, man. Send, oh, send me out, home. <laughs> it's weird. Top level fighter, but I don't think he has a heart to be a champion. Not to say he's like soft, but he just when the t- when the going gets tough, the champions uh, like Gordon Ryan did. Well, we'll get to that. They they tough it out. Not Charles Oliveira. Tisha Torres smashes on Michelle Watterson. Pretty good. Tisha Torres uh, put a beating on Michelle Watterson. She lost the second round, but uh, third, first and third were pretty lopsided. Then, fight of the night, predictably, Justin Gaethje and Eddie Alvarez. I went back and rewatched this fight, and it was a lot closer than I thought. I thought Justin Gaethje was getting beat up when I was watching it live. But when I went back and watched, he was really shelling up good. He's really protecting himself, and he was landing vicious leg kicks. As a matter of so, I thought he's win. He won the first, he lost the second, and he was winning the third. I think if the fight finishes, Justin Gaethje wins because he dropped Eddie Alvarez twice. Remember in that third round, Eddie had to pull guard because his leg was gone, and then he got knocked down again. So you know, Justin Gaethje was beating his ass, and then he got knocked out. Like he said he would, and I had 100% of him on DraftKings like a dumbass. I faded Eddie Alvarez because I believe, I, oh, I believe. Because last time, guess what I did? I faded Justin Gaethje. So I don't fucking know about Justin. I don't know how to call Justin Gaethje. I need a Justin Gaethje whisperer. Dave, what do you think of this fight? I thought it was I thought it was a scrap. I need to go back and, and rewatch it because um, I definitely I took notice of, of Gaethje. I think that, like everyone did, t- taking out Eddie's Eddie's legs with those vicious leg kicks. Um, I, I guess watching it live, it didn't seem that he was shelling up as much as um, as you're saying he he is. It seemed like Eddie Alvarez was doing some damage with some vicious body shots before he uh, he caught Gaethje with that knee to end the the, the fight. But um, I definitely have to go back rewatch it. Um, I think. <clears throat> I think there's just recent. I think you might have had recency bias. I might have had recency bias, and, and a lot of us wrote uh, Eddie Eddie off after he was almost stopped by uh, Poirier before that illegal before the whole. Yeah, illegal Eddie league. always gets clipped. He didn't even get clipped. Well, yes, he did. He got clipped, and I don't know, man. Justin Gaethje is irresponsible, and that's why I picked Michael Johnson over him. But I seen him survive that shit, so I was like, "Fuck it." I know Glassjaw is gonna get because Eddie always gets caught, you know. In every fight, he gets hurt. I was like, if he gets hurt here, Justin Gaethje is gonna put his ass away. I was like, perfect matchup, my stupid ass. I don't know why I did. I hedged everything else right except for Eddie Alvarez. I think we need to have a Poirier Gaethje, uh, Poirier Gaethje and Alvarez triple threat match at this fucking point. <laughs> Poirier, I like Poirier. I think Poirier put be, put the beating on Justin Gaethje, man. Poirier, um, Poirier is very hurtable, and then but only with people who have good boxing, and Justin Gaethje doesn't have that. So I don't think the leg kicks. Eddie Alvarez leg kicks. He was very successful, susceptible to leg kicks. So I guess I made the right pick, but I don't fucking know. It didn't work out. Ruined my weekend. I had, I was having a great weekend until that shit. Anyway, Henry Cejudo beats up on Sergio Pettis. Ah, should have seen that coming. I thought Sergio would do better, but his takedown defense ain't good enough to deal with that. And then, oh my, OMFNG, 
motherfucking Francis and Ganu n- ghosted motherfucking Alistair Overeem's ass, man. That he fucking most- committed. He committed murder. <laughs> He fucking he's wanted he's wanted in Detroit for fucking murder. A <laughs> candlelight uh vigil, vigil is yes. set to be held in the Netherlands. I believe uh, it was held today for Alistair Overeem. I mean his toes fucking curled up, man. Uh he went stiff. I mean that is the most ferocious shit I have ever seen. <laughs> oh my god. The fucking up. So, oh. so uh, I saw a tweet that had me in fucking tears. Somebody somebody tweeted, Alistair Overeem got up with a big smile on his face after getting KO, KO'd like that. Like, he was accustomed to that. Like, he just got a good night's sleep. Man. I was fucking hysterical when I, I read that. I seen him, uh, you know how The Rock would always do that smelling motion, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then they did Overeem getting fucking ghosted. <laughs> God. <laughs> And they did it <laughs> side by side, and they looked just like, uh, man. Oh, uh, and God who told him he was sleeping, and then he put him to sleep. That was absolutely horrible. One of the worst KOs I have ever seen. He is a scary, scary man. Stipe, my Ochich, your funeral is upcoming, brother. I wouldn't. I, I mean, that really shows how tough Curtis Blades is, because he took a lot of that and wanted more. So... I got to give it to Curtis Blades because he, he he took it and kept on coming. I don't know how either. Anyway, on to the main event. Max Holloway does the same thing he did in the first fight and finishes uh, Jose Aldo in the third, I believe. I think he finished him in the third last. It looked like the exact same, same fight. So, um, yeah, nothing changed there. Jose Aldo is a great fighter. He The only people he's lost to have been... Like what? Conor McGregor, no shame in that. Max Holloway twice. Max Holloway will be an all to all time great, no shame in that. And um, God, who else did he lose to? I can't even think. Luciano Azevedo, way back in the way. So Jose Aldo didn't lose for like ten years, like a decade, man. So one of the very all time greats. We're tending to forget that, but I don't think many people in the world can beat him. Just Max Holloway, Conor McGregor, who else? So he, here's what I was saying. Where I, I, I uh, I'm gonna get some strong disagreement, and I think it's I think it might be time for uh, Jose to uh, <clears throat> to hang it up, uh, unless he decides to to maybe move up a weight class and move up to 155. Um, I think he's still s- still a good fighter, and he's obviously lost to two of the better fighters in the UFC, especially at um, 145, right, and Max Holloway and, and Connor. And Connor might have taken his soul after he knocked him out in 13 seconds. Uh, he did look good against Frankie Edgar uh, after that Connor fight. But um, I just think that there's no reason for Aldo to linger around 145 um, if he's not really going to get another shot at the championship or if he can't dethrone the current champion. So for him, I think – the way it's got to play out is is basically kind of like <clears throat> Rose beating Joanna, right? Where Joanna kind of had a stranglehold on that whole division, and Styles make fights, and now I feel like there's certain people that certain fighters that can certain fighters that can beat Rose, but couldn't beat Joanna. So unless somebody like Frankie beats Max, which I don't see happening, right? I don't think Aldo has another path to the championship. So I think he's got to move up, and and he's a championship caliber fighter. So there's no reason for him, unless he really needs the money, to continue fight mid tier guys, or unless he moves up to 155 and eventually wants to to fight Tony Ferguson possibly for the title if they give him that title shot. Because I just I think he wants to box now. I think that'd be good for him. It's not that he sucks; he doesn't. No, he doesn't. And I don't, I don't, I don't disagree. I just don't think he has another path to the championship. He still and, can and make just, money, though. He's still a draw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he's only like 29, too, isn't he? Yeah, I don't think he's that old. Yeah, I He's like he's 29 right years now. old, man. Like, dude, is, he looks like he's about 40. But he's actually, he looks like he's a 40-year-old Colombian drug dealer. But uh, Jose is a very, he's got that scar in his fucking face and everything, man. Jose is about 29 years old, I think, man. He still hadn't even reached 30. So he's I think he's that creepy, creepy mustache. 
Jose has looked old his entire adulthood. He came out the womb looking like he was 35. <laughs> he, he, probably, he probably looked like that when he came out. But anyway, um, let's get on to, uh, I guess, Fight Night 123. A uh, preview. Before we do, though, I've got one of the fighters on the card here. He'll be fighting up against Benito Lopez at 135 pounds from Benito Lopez coming from Dana White's looking for a fight. Uh, let's welcome Albert Morales to the school of Black Negro Jitsu. Albert Warrior Morales, welcome to the school of Black Negro Jitsu. It is excellent to have you uh, this weekend at UFC Fight Night. Uh, a million and twenty-seven Ortega versus Swanson. I forget what the number is, man. But you're going to be fighting um, Benito Lopez. Um, how you feeling? That's the that's the first question I should ask. Man, I've never felt better, man. And and you know it's a cliche thing, but you know honestly, I always feel like I'm getting better and better and better every day. But you know, I just took a whole different approach. I took a real professional approach with it where, you know, all the way from diet to mentally, like, you know, sleep patterns, just everything, man. I just took everything seriously. Like this is, you know, the, the, this my whole UFC career, I, I always thought I was doing it the right way. I always told myself, yeah, you know, you're doing everything you can. And this is the first camp that I realized I wasn't. And you know it's funny, like, and I'm doing a lot more. <laughs> why why do you like, say I'm that? Why do you say up. that? You, you've only taken losses to – Really good fighters. I mean, what Brett Johns did to Joe Soto this weekend um, makes your performance against him, which was more. Well, we'll get into that later. But I mean, you've only taken losses to top level fighters. Thomas Almeida is what twenty one and one or twenty one and two. Brett Johns is undefeated. You know, what do you feel that you haven't been doing right exactly? Oh um, man, it's just a lot. Like, um, just preparing, dude. Honestly, like. Uh, honestly, I, I know I can be any one of those guys in my best shape, in my best, my, like right now, man, if if you tell me to fight Brett Johns, man, it, it, it's on and cracking. I got nothing but respect for what I do, but, I, you know, we talk a lot on social media. We're, we're actually, you know, I wouldn't say friends, but we're cool. Same thing with Almeida. We can get it, man. Like, like at this point in my career, man, I I, I feel like I've taken a huge leap. Um, you taking short notice fights both those fights were on two weeks notice two to three weeks notice you know in other countries you know like i i, I would still take those fights but i wouldn't take them in the amount of time that i would i you know i, I should have listened to my team i rushed it i i came into the ufc knowing that i can kill it uh, that i can take everybody out and i rushed it it's the ufc man and and these are you know these guys are the best in the world and so you just you, you got to take your time. You got to be patient with it, man. And you got to make the right moves. And, 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 you know, it just comes with maturity. I had to go through that to get to where I'm at right now. So um, I understand they're great fighters, but they're great fighters I shouldn't have lost to. Let, let me ask you a question. I was watching your last fight with Brett Johns, and your wrestling coach was really pissed at you about what you, I guess, should have known and did know and weren't doing. What exactly – weren't you doing in that fight uh, to deal with uh, the wrestling uh, clinic that he put on you in that fight that your coach was so mad at you about? Your wrestling coach. What's your yeah, wrestling man, coach's man. name? Uh, coach Kenny Johnson. Okay, yeah. Kenny Johnson coach was Kenny, pissed yeah. at Al. He was pissed at the Warrior. He was, he was fucking hot. What did you do that had him so hot? Man, it was just we, we, we knew exactly what Brett Johns was going to do. You know what I mean? We knew his, his whole game is to press you up against the cage and it's going to take you down. And, um, you know, it's funny is because I, ha like, you know, for the most part, I've never been taken down off the cage. I actually have pretty good takedown defense. Um, my jujitsu is actually my strong point. So even if I do get taken to the ground, I have really good jujitsu. I've, I've, uh, I don't know how many submissions, but I have a, uh, I have a grip of them. Um, and, and, and it was just, I, I didn't train as hard in those areas as I should have. And, and, and we, th these are simple things like underhooking. If his head's too low, press down. If his head is high, pull him up, you know, circling off the cage, things that, 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 that I've coming up, have known what to do. And it was just, um, a lot of thinking, man, I was in shape. I was at that time that that had been the best shape I've ever been in as well, far as cardio physically. I was, if you think was while that? you're grappling, you're late, you know, so you can't be, you're late. Anything. You're late. You can't You're do late. that. You can't do that. So why no. were you thinking so much? What was the problem? Lack, lack of focus. Didn't train as like didn't I? I didn't 
go to as many jujitsu. Like I, I, I honestly, I went to jujitsu maybe like, like maybe like out of the whole camp, maybe like ten times. You know what I mean? Because I was just like so confident that my ground game is always going to be there. Like I don't have to worry about it. But jujitsu and anything in martial arts is a perishable skill. So if you don't continue working on it and getting better, keeping that timing, you're gonna you're you're gonna see what's gonna happen. I didn't get submitted by Ben Johns. I didn't. It wasn't like he passed my guard and, and took mount and all that. None of that stuff. It was just I wasn't. I was a step behind, you know. And that was due to training and lack of focus and timing and and you know thinking. The the biggest thing is that what my head coach was saying. He was like, see, all this time. I, I, you kept saying during camp, I got it, I got it, I got it. And obviously we saw in the fight you didn't have it. So it was like, I, the, I don't have it. I never got it. I'm always going to work. Whatever my coach tells me to do, I'm going to do it. And, and it took me losing a wrestling match, getting put on my back and not doing anything for my back to, to realize that, man. Um. Yeah, man. When when you when it comes to, to grappling and wrestling, I train jujitsu. And one thing I realize is, you got to stay training, got to stay sharp, because if that other guy is a step ahead of you, man, you are absolutely screwed. Um, One thing, I was watching your opponent earlier, and I was like, well, because I play DraftKings, so I study all this stuff, but I got excited about Albert Morales on DraftKings because Benito Lopez has a few flaws. In his fight on Dana White's Contender Series, um, he, uh, first of all, he gassed out. Second of all, he doesn't deal with pressure fighters very well. And that's exactly what uh what Albert Morales is. How do you feel about this matchup? Do you feel as you don't have to give us the game plan, but do you feel as I feel good about what you're being presented with here, man? Definitely, man. And I just I I'm I'm I feel a hundred percent confident. This is a fight that was supposed to happen a while ago. Um I've evolved. I've I I, I don't feel he has evolved. I actually believe that he actually fights better against pressure fighters. You know, I am going to press him, but I'm going to press him in a different way, a more educated way than what these other guys are doing. Because these guys, like you saw, I think, honestly, like, I'm not a hater. I think Benito belongs in the UFC. I think Benito will be in the UFC for a long time. But I don't think he won that fight. Versus Steven Peterson? Benito did. Yeah, yeah uh, at the Contender Series. Okay, I don't think he won oh, that was, fight. It was I think super what happened close, was, man. It was super close. It was and... really close. It was. I, I I think the flying knee knocked down the couple of um. You know what I mean? Like he's really good at those athletic moves. Like I said, he belongs in the UFC. Not taking that away from him, but he fights really well against pressure fighters. This Peterson just kept coming at him, and he kept coming in right into those knees. He's a long dude, and he likes to play that that flying knee game. Back. He he likes going backwards and catching you coming in. So he's actually really good at fighting pressure fighters. If they don't. If they're just pressuring, it's not a real, they, like, that, he didn't really pressure him in a smart way. There wasn't no feints. There wasn't, like, you know, it, it, I'm going to come at him with a different approach. I'm going to come out there and I'll press him, and, and, and you're going to see how it really is to pressure. I, I'm going to, it's going to be a good fight, man. It's, like I said, this is what I've been telling everybody. If this guy comes in shape, then this fight can go three rounds, and it's going to be a great fight. But if he doesn't come in shape, I'm taking his ass out. Well, I, I'm looking at different films of him. He's not his conditioning is uh it's not great, man. Especially if he gets to grappling and stuff. Suspect. You say it's definitely yeah. what? It's, yes, it's suspect, it's definitely man. Suspect. It's suspect. So by the time he gets around two or three, I think he should be declining. Um, if you fight the right fight and you push his anaerobic and aerobic systems in the right way, um. Yeah, man, I I think this is the worst opponent that you face yet. Not to say he's bad, and that's not saying he's bad. He's not. He's probably the best athlete you face yet. But like as far as skill, he's he's not as good as Andre Sukumtai. He's not as 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 great of a challenge. I think that uh, I think this is an awesome opportunity for you not only win, but uh, how 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 are you looking forward to getting a finish here? Can we see a finish from Albert Morales? That would speak volumes. Definitely, man, and and this is the reason, like you're saying, you know, it's, he's definitely the most. I think I give him the athletic part. I think this guy, I think Benito has everything what it takes to become a champion as far as athletic ability. You know, this kid, he's very explosive. He's long for the division. He's tall for the division. Like he's got everything, man. He he, he kind of reminds me of like a, uh, you know, a not not as good, but I mean, 
reminds me of like a, a, a Max Holloway kind of type of guy. So um, I think he has all the potential in the world. But as far as the guys that, 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 that I fought, I, I, you know, there, there are a couple of uh, steps ahead of him. And I think he's got a lot of growing up to do. Um, yes, for sure. And the cool thing about this fight is that I believe that this finish can come from anywhere, man. Um, I, I know, I know I'm going to, I can, I'm going to smoke him on the ground. If he gets to the ground, it's, gonna, it, it's either going to be a TKO or it's going to be a submission. A, yeah, a that, that's tap, the man. same thing be- that, uh, that I was thinking because his ground game coming from alpha male is weird, but his ground game, I mean, he got to the ground against, uh, uh who's that Peterson and he was in, he was stuck, uh, uh, in bottom side control and he didn't do anything. He just, th- he just laid on his back, man. So I'm not really impressed by what I'm seeing from the alpha male product. I saw him guillotine somebody. He probably has good submissions, but his overall jujitsu game, uh, especially from the back, if you're not in his guard and he's not using that length, it looks like trash once you get to a dominant position on him. Yeah, definitely. And, and, and me and my team are, you know, we, we got, we, we see, we've seen it. We broke it down. It's really, you know, I'm still preparing as if, as if he's Brett Johns. I'm preparing as if he's, you know, Augusto Mendes or Joe Soto. It doesn't, that doesn't take away how hard I'm preparing on the ground. Uh, my ground, I, I, like I said, I lost to Brett Johns on the ground. That, that, that broke me. So I'm like, what the hell? Time to live back in jujitsu. I've, I've done competitions in jujitsu. I've done two since then. I'm back in the gym. Okay, I'm, what I'm, level, I fell what back level were the level. competitions? What, what competitions did you do? Um, the, I, I competed in the IBJJF tournament and I competed in the NABJJF tournament, which are two, like, NABJJF is like one of like the, it's the biggest local tournaments around here. They, they go all over the place. And then IBJJF are like the international, those are the, the top tournaments that you can go to for jiu-jitsu. But I compete at purple belt level. How'd you do? Oh, I got, I, I ended up having five matches. I ended up losing to the winner in both. So I got third place in both my mat and both my tournaments. Okay, that's not and bad. I had yeah, 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 yeah. With, well, you know, we didn't, we're not going in like obviously you want to go into these tournaments to win, you know. But but me and my professor we're actually we're going in there to to practice game plan. Like it's literally game plan for what we were doing for this fight. And um, we we the best thing is we got five matches. You know what I mean? Usually you get you know you lose you're out. So we had five matches, which which actually worked out better for us when I lost in the in the semifinals because that gave me an extra match. So. It was, was awesome, this gear or no um, gear? Oh, both. Both, okay. Both, 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 both. Yeah, one was um, one was a double weekend. So we've been killing it, man. We've been, we've been, we've been working really hard, getting back to the drawing boards. You know, working fundamentals. Um, game plan. Game plan is not too complicated, man. The, the biggest thing is to be in shape and just be mentally sharp. You know, we're excited. We're excited for this matchup. I'm ready to. To, 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 you know, knock out or finish Benito and then get on to, I got, I got three tournaments lined up after this. I'm going to Arizona for the IBJJF Arizona. Then I'm going to go to New York for IBJJF New York. And then I'm going to finish it off in Chicago um, for Carlson Gracie um, IBJF. We, our big tournament is in Chicago. So we're about to, I'm going to go out there, represent Carlson Gracie team again, and then I uh, get right back into fight mode, hopefully fight like Mark's. So I'm I'm prepping for the future, man. I'm 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 excited. I'm not looking past Benito, but we're 100 percent confident in how hard we work, and we're about to finish this, dude. Um, you train at Black House Steel. Where are you training out of now? Are you satisfied with that setting, or have you ever thought about maybe trying to switch it up? How you feel about your training? Uh, your training location? No, right no, now? no. My 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 teams are my teams are my teams, man. We're more than a team. It's like family brotherhood so I, I don't believe in switching up teams my 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 main gyms black house is um they're 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 family they're part they're my they're one of my main gyms coach kenny johnson will forever be my wrestling coach and those guys will ever, forever be my brothers but those guys came afterwards i've always been at, at under my coach coach james teal that guy is my i'm gonna die with that dude and then um my my, my lineage is Carlson gracie under andre abbas Gonzalez. So those two, Carlson Gracie and the movement boxing, those are those are like my staples. That's where I'm gonna go no matter what. This camp, I stepped away from Black House. I wanted to come back to the roots, to what got me to the UFC. So I kind of stepped away from Black House a little bit, not because of them, just because I wanted to get myself back into this dark place. And and I had to go back to what I what I did when I first started. So I went back to the movement boxing and Carlson Gracie for this camp. 
and and yeah, I'll, I'll I'll never leave I'll I'll never leave those teams. Neither Black House either. But I'm but but um as far as you know my my staple staples, it's got to be the Movement Boxing, Carlson Gracie, and then my Black House family for sure. All right, Albert. That's all. I told you I only needed a couple minutes. Of course, you you really seem geek for this. You gave me a lot more information than I thought I'd get. But thanks for uh, stopping by the School of Black Negro Jitsu today, man. Excellent to have you, and um, I hope to have you back. Um, I don't know when you'll be back. I know you. <laughs> we'll we'll have you back sometime, but I don't know. Any shout outs? Man, you can. Let me know whenever you guys want me, man. If you guys want to break down some fights, I'm always down, bro. I know. Always I know. I, I don't use you enough, man. I should have you a lot more. I need an exciting finish or something that I can ride to an Albert Morales live stream or something like that. Um, oh, man. But, uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed our conversation with Albert Warrior Morales. I'm super confident that he takes this fight against Benito Lopez after I watch film on Lopez gassing out. Uh, kind of, he's still young. He's still young and raw. So I like Albert Morales. Albert Morales has only lost to top level fighters: Thomas Almeida, Brett Johns. I don't think Benito Lopez is either of those guys. So I like him a lot this upcoming weekend. But let's preview the rest of the card. Antonio Braganeto. Versus uh, Trevin Giles. I got Braganetto. He hadn't fought in like two years, but Black Belt versus Trevin Giles. Trevin Giles didn't have an elite. So I see it going one of two ways. Antonio Braganetto dominates with his grappling, or he gets outstruck to a loss late. But early, he should have the edge grappling. He's a top level Black Belt. Chris Gutsumaka versus David Ramos. I'm going to take Black Belt David Ramos. Alejandro Perez versus Ari Alcantara. I guess Alcantara should win, but he can lose to anybody, so who knows for him. Frankie Sines versus Mirab Davish. Davidi I don't know. Alex Perez versus Carl John to Thomas. I don't know. Neither do I care. Luke Sanders versus Andre Sukumta. Luke Sanders all day. Alexis Davis versus Lish Carmouche. Hmm. I'm going to take the Gorilla. What is Liz Carmouche's nickname? Isn't it the Gorilla or something? Girl Rilla. I, there I, it is. I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking take, at her. She definitely looks like a good Girl Rilla right now. I'm going to take Girl Rilla, uh, Liz Carmouche over Alexis Davis. Of course, Alvin Riley is over Benito Lopez. And what should be good early, but should have turned into a blowout late. I'm going to take your boy. Eric Anders over Marcus Perez. Uh, uh, Marcus Perez doesn't look like he's... Uh, He's too good at all, for real. Um, I don't know. Eric Anders should. I'm figuring he should knock him out. Eric Anders is still pretty raw himself, but he thinks he seems to do everything except for jujitsu better, I guess. Scott Holtzman, Derek Horcher. I don't know. It should be a great fight. I'm going to take St. Horcher, though. I think he's got more power, but that should be a, that's a toss-up. Funkmaster all day over at Marlon Marias. Uh, let's take uh, let's take Jason the Kid over Gabriel Benitez. Should be a great fight though. Benitez is tough. He shouldn't. And then of course Brian Ortega in the third round, uh, all day over Cub Swanson because Brian Ortega always wins in the third round because his mama had a dream. So I'm always on Brian Ortega in the third round. That's how I likes to roll. Um, or, uh, yeah, that's fight night one twenty three. Uh, should be an exciting fight card. Dave, what do you think of the fight card? Anything you're excited about? No? Yes? Yes? So, no? So so I'm definitely excited for the main event. I think that should definitely be a scrap. I think Ortega versus Swanson is definitely going to be a good fight. Um, I think the most important question I had about this fight card was, is Eric Anders still mad at you? Oh, Eric Anders? <laughs> I don't know, man. We got to we gotta sneak and get him on the show, man. I need you to send him a uh, a message, and we'll get him on. But uh, don't tell him that. I, it was, he won't even remember. But he, he, I said he was a great prospect. I just didn't think he needed to be owned at 100% versus uh, said opponent, you know? Because mm. he, he was more experienced against him. Who did he fight last fight? What was, who was that? Um, I can't remember who it was, but, but he, he was, was really, he was, yeah, he he was, was very good. upset at you. He's yeah, very man. upset at you. Uh, Rafael Natal. I felt like, yeah, he's a great pick. He could definitely win, but he's raw in every area. And he, you know how fighters be all sensitive and shit, man. I don't know. 
I, I I never said he was a bad fighter, I, but he, you know, it was right before the fight. I, you know, I guess he should feel like me against the fucking world, you know, coming in on short notice and all that kind of stuff like that. But um, yeah, yeah, I definitely want to see uh, Aljamain Sterling versus uh, Marlon Marais. Uh, I don't think Marlon Marais has looked that impressive in, since he's been in the UFC. No, was his, his last. Who's his last win against that? I want to say it was was it John Dodson? I thought Definitely. John Dodson won that fight. Me too. And I think I feel like he he got away with uh, you know, a bullshit decision and, and I just want to see <clears throat> New York's own Al Jermaine Sterling, Funk Master, uh, you know, really give him some work. So funk I, Master I hope, is gonna funk him up. I agree. So those are two two of the fights that I'm really excited for on this card. Um the rest of the card looks like it could be one of those cards that could either just be a snooze fest or could be surprisingly good. Um, so I hope it's I hope it's surprisingly good and I hope it's not a snooze fest. So, all righty, let's go ahead and um, get into some random news here. Um, the Kinahan family, I guess, is uh, after Conor McGregor, Kinahan Cartel. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if it's even real, but they're speculating that Conor McGregor was in a brawl with some Irish gangsters. They had to leave the country because they got into it with him and everything. Do you think there's any reality to this? I figure if Conor McGregor gets into a brawl, there will be cell phone footage of it. What do you think, Dave? I mean, do you I, think I'm this is even real? I, I'm, not sh- I'm not sure what to think. Um, there's uh, there, there was a whole article about about. Connor possibly having some Irish mob ties in some way, way, shape, or form. Um, I, I do kind of agree where you would you would possibly see maybe some cell phone st- footage. It might be a publicity stunt. Um, I, I really don't know much much about you know the whole situation besides what I've been reading. Um, I, I don't. I, I think it's more a PR move than uh than something real i, I do agree I, th- I feel like if if he got into a bar bro i feel like you would have seen some cell phone footage by now but uh but who knows it looked like it was a really rural irish bar so maybe there were no cell phones there you know so <laughs> so uh I, I don't know what to make of it but um i just I, I i don't see him getting into with his celebrity and i know he's he's a tough dude and all but I don't see any reason for him to get into a bar brawl. It looks like like a PR like headline grab. So that's my thought process on it. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Magana was mad about the stoppage in her fight against uh, ABC Bobby Cooper. I didn't see the problem with it. She was absolutely getting her ass whipped. Um, I don't see why she needed to get her ass whipped any worse than what she did. Uh, in Ryan James, it doesn't always have to go to Ryan James, Neil Magny type uh, purport, you know, levels in order for the fight to be stopped. You don't have to always go flat and get woken back up in order for us to justify stoppage. But uh, she wants equal rights in fights. Um, she wants to lure girls to take beatings too. I think I guess she's right. If she wasn't a girl, they probably would have let her keep getting their ass whooped. Um, but everything in that fight went wrong. I mean, her titty fell out. Um, she was getting beaten down. I mean, it, it probably needed to stop. That was probably for her own good. What do you think? Do you think that the girl should be allowed to take worse beatings? I, 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 I'm all for uh, equal rights in fights if, if that's what's necessary. And I think that's just – I think a ref has – the refs, a lot of them have, have a certain bias – not towards gender, but towards the fighter's body of work. And let's be honest here, Angela's body work of work is her usually getting the shit kicked out of her. So um, he should just be, he should just, I think she should just be happy that the ref wasn't a cyborg fan and then let ABC beat up on her a little bit more. Um, I, I'm, I, I think the obviously it's it's human intuition and, and human deci- decisiveness right for a ref to come in and try and stop a fight but usually f- it feels like bias for a ref is well, once again to reiterate is just towards the fighter's body of work so if a fighter is shown that they could take a prolonged beating get back up and stay in a fight and possibly win that fight i feel like refs will give them a little bit more leeway before they stop the fight 
Um, <clears throat> so, it, 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 for example, in the in the Aldo Holloway fight, the ref actually said, "Jose, defend yourself, or I'm gonna stop the fight," and ended up calling off the fight. Um, Mangana has done nothing to prove the fact that she could take a beating. So, until she could do something like that, I don't think she she personally deserves that much rope to take an ass kicking but yeah you got to be uh, like a champion or a veteran or something like that to, in order to get your ass whipped really bad you, know you gotta be saying? you gotta be somebody who's known to, to be able to take a beating and get the hell back up and she just takes beatings so you know that's that's about it in, in my opinion uh Ari- ariana celeste just made a uh a music video called Zoo. Uh, have you watched it yet? I have. I actually have not. I, I don't know anything about this. Yeah, I guess it just came out today. She's launching a music career. Of course, she of course looks beautiful. I mean, wonderful. There's no. I mean, that's all it takes to have a successful music career, right? I don't know if she can actually sing, but when do these uh, ladies in music actually sing? It's always. Uh, taped and recorded and you know all you got to do is be able to dance and have a nice look and you're in right yeah i'm assuming she's probably not even writing her own songs i'm, I'm assuming she's got a ghostwriter and who somebody writes does them. write their own songs in the r&b business i agree and and i think if she's got a look and she's got market she's definitely got the looks and if there's the right marketability behind her maybe she can have some type of career for herself uh, so she's definitely got cause she's definitely got the look aspect of it down. Oh yeah, I mean that's all that's what you gotta have. Now I don't know if she has a special something you know that draws people in, but um, shit, man, I think she's uh, I think she's gonna do. She looks good enough. She should do just fine. Um, hmm, I don't see too too much. Um, what the hell? I guess Anderson Silva and Roy Jones Jr. talking about a super fight. That was cool like 10 years ago, guys. Let that shit die. <laughs> I ain't tripping, man. They, if they don't do this fight, they might do a remix to Y'all Must Have Forgot. Oh, shit, man. These old fighters living in the fucking past, man. Let that ship sail. I guess last but not least, let's talk about EBI 14, man. And uh, one of our guests, Craig Jones, did absolutely spectacular. I think that he finished his first three opponents in a combined 46 seconds. That's not 46 seconds for each fight. That's 46 seconds to finish each person. So it was 13, 20, and like another 13 or something like that. Absolutely spectacular. Had the uh, king of EBI, Gordon Ryan, about finished and uh, had the arm bar locked in. I'm pretty sure that Gordon Ryan's. it was kind of weird because the announcer was talking about that, that uh, – Jones had talked about a lot of people allowing their arm to break and just escaping the arm bar. And that's what Gordon Ryan did. He allowed that elbow capsule, I, I'm assuming, to pop and break and just uh, pull it out and was able to sink in the rear naked choke to finish. Um, man, Craig Jones is uh, taking the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world by storm, Dave. What do you think of that? I mean, his, his star just keeps growing and growing. Obviously, as, as a guest of our show, right, I was rooting for him. Uh, my bias was with him. He just... He just doesn't disappoint, right? After that amazing ADCC showing, uh, he just fucking stormed EBI. And, and the fact that he stopped every one of his opponents in amazing time and, and gave everything everything to Gordon Ryan and, and literally had him, you know, possibly seconds away from, from losing. Um, I, I called that, I called that from, from when I saw the uh, brackets come out and then on opposite sides of the brackets i assume that would end up being the the final um i didn't expect i didn't expect craig to be as dominant in all his fights to the lead up as he was um but uh gordon ryan is just something else this this kid's just one of the filthiest no-gi grapplers i've ever seen um i i like i i don't know what's next for this for this guy i'm assuming this possibly a MMA career in it for him because I know Gary Tonin I think just signed with one championship, so it's possible he probably signed somewhere in Asia or he does does something soon because this this kid is just a beast and I don't know who who, who could beat him in a in a no gi submission only type of match. So 
Yeah, I uh, who Gordon Ryan. I mean, Craig Jones pretty much had him beat. It was pretty much a stalemate until the uh, the overtime. And uh, I think Craig Jones. Well, Gordon Ryan is going to the hospital. Craig Jones is going to the bar party. So I think Craig <laughs> Jones won in uh, in theory. You know what I'm saying? How that saying goes. So Gordon Ryan took the worst of that shit for sure, man. That arm. He did not look happy after that win at all. He's a true warrior. I was talking about Charles Oliveira earlier. That's what it takes to be a champion, man. You got to be able to uh, tough through the uh, moments like uh, Gordon Ryan went through in order to get to that championship level. Charles Oliveira just doesn't have that. But uh, that about does it for the School of Black Negro Jitsu for this week. Oh, we've got Pour Tu Mes Amis Francais. I've got an interview for you. Tia Ball Guti. We had him on the show. We actually were talking about uh, Francis Ngannou, um, his uh, his trainer, Fernand Lopez. Uh, Tia Ball Guti has some very interesting to say, things to say about him. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the interview with Tia Ball Guti. Uh, I hope you guys join us for the MMAH Fantasy Podcast. Black Market Picks is going to be back this week. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys check into the School of Black Negro Jitsu next week. Um, and, yeah, Tia Ball Guti. Uh, au revoir, mes amis. Tia Ball Guti. Soyez le bienvenu à l'écho de Black Negro Jitsu. Tia Ball Guti. Welcome to the School of Black Negro Jitsu Excellent to have you here. My first ever Frenchman. I speak pretty good French myself. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You're speaking good French too, so that's good. I'm very happy to be on your podcast. Uh, excellent to have you. One of the few Frenchmen in mixed martial arts. I wanted to know, um, and if you have any problems in um, with my English, I'll just say it in French for you. Um, okay. But being a Frenchman... Uh, is 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 it's very hard because if I'm not mistaken, mixed martial arts is still illegal in France. So, how did you get into mixed martial arts as a Frenchman? How did so, you navigate that? So, I first I first start. Um, so I, I first start five years ago in France and in France. So, like you say before, this is illegal. So. We we do like uh, like we call uh, and everybody call pancras. So you can strike on stand up, but when you go on the ground, you can only wrestle or grapple. So this is a totally different sport. You can't so, use uh, the palms the, the the palms to the head. No no no. You can use nothing. You, you when you go on the ground, you 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 can you can hit. You can throw any hit. This is forbidden. I remember uh, if you remember Boz Rutten. Frank Shamrock, yeah. Ken Shamrock, they were all prank creation fighters. And I remember them using the open palm strike to the head. So yeah. that's not legal anymore in pan craze? I mean, th that was in China or Japan. I don't remember exactly. But ah, hey, man, okay. we live in France. In France, everything is about uh, paper, documentation, administration. Everybody is very scared or do things. But this is only... This is a, a business thing. This is why they don't make the MMA legal in France because, you know, MMA take over all combat sports. We know this. And in France, the federation, uh, the, the federation of judo is very big and they don't want to see all, all their uh, students go to MMA. That's ah. just a business thing. Yeah, I heard that the judo federation has been the biggest obstacle to yeah. the legalization of MMA in France. Is is mm -hmm. that true? Yeah, yeah, that's true. That because you know uh, MMA, it's like judo. It's it's only one sport. MMA, it's like every every sport or every combat sport. So when when you're gonna bring this to people, they're gonna be like amazed and they're gonna leave the judo because. If you talk, judo is good, okay, that's a good sport, I like it, but this is very unidimensional, you know, so you can only do some things and don't do other things, there is no KO, this is not very spectacular, like MMA, so they want to protect this because they know they're going to lose many people. And is judo the biggest, mar is it the biggest martial art in France or boxing? What's the most popular martial uh, art in France? Uh, yeah, I think judo because there is a you, you, there 
Uh, French people they are very good at kickboxing. Boxing, not that much. Boxing was in decline, was declining. Before, we were very good. But I think right now, the, the people who have the most uh, lessons in France is the judo, yeah. Ah, okay. And you, if I'm not mistaken, did you start off in kickboxing and then switched over to pancreation and subsequently martial arts, mixed martial arts? No, so me, I, I start... Um, so me, I, I start doing, uh, I start doing grappling in, uh, in the hood with people. There was no really trainer and everything like this. So I start, <laughs> Wait yeah. a minute. You said the hood. So you yeah, yeah. The, the ghetto, the French yeah, ghetto. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, that's right. Because, you know, in France, the only people who do combat sport, that's the the Maghreban people, you know, Moroccan, Tunisian, Algerian. And Wait, uh, mo- the, the, most of my, my French pen pals are uh-huh. Maghrebian. So they're from Algeria uh-huh. or from um, also uh, a little, well, I don't know if the, the Mayotte is a part of Maghreb. That's a French territory, though. But a lot of my French pen pals come from the Maghreb. Yeah, so, and they are very strong. And they, they, you, because of the history, they, they used to be oppressed by the French people, so they have, they had to be strong. So they start to do like, like boxing, kickboxing, karate, and they were very good. So that the only people who do this because the, the other part of France they do like more, football, rugby, tennis, judo, you know. And these type of people they do boxing, kickboxing, and they are very good, man. This is why after. They do this in the hood to calm the people, you know. I see. And is uh, Francis Ngannou is 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 is, is Cameroon? Is that a part of the uh, Maghreb? No. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Cameroon okay. is uh, is in, in is in Africa, and um, it's kind of it's kind of French because the 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 French uh, people colonized the Cameroon. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Th- that's not, not that's not French. He. he I mean. I, I don't think he consider himself as a French, and I, I, I don't think he's French too, even if I have been in France. I see. So you started grappling in the French ghettos. So what, what would you consider the base of your style? Because I would think it was strongest in the, the striking, but yeah. how do you feel about it? Yeah, so I, I, first, start, I first start by grappling, and I was in, uh, so like I told you, in the hood, and I was doing this, but n- no people wanted to go, they didn't want to compete. And I was, I was staying there, training, but I wasn't competing. But I didn't know to throw one punch or something like this. So I, I, I moved, I was, I moved, I went to another city, and I, and I went to another gym. And I went in this gym, and the people were, uh, were more like, competition you know in the competition styles they were doing more competition and so they knew how to strike and i start to train with them and they kicked me very bad you know like so you said they kicked you, they kicked your ass huh yeah they kicked my ass very bad and so when i saw this when i saw this i said i'm not gonna stay like this i'm gonna do something so i went in a, in another gym in another hood where i moved and i start to do boxing and after I start to like to do boxing and striking and everything, and now I think I'm more, I'm more strikers on a grappler. Uh and okay, being a Frenchman, the French France doesn't have the strongest wrestling programs. Um, like you said, judo is probably the premier um, mm-hmm. art in France. So, how hard has it been for you to kind of transition? from the MMA on the French regional scene, which I believe did, did not include ground and pound, to your career in the cage organization and also the UFC. Like, what have been, what have, what have been the hardest points for you? So, <clears throat> I, I, I don't think I, I had a, a hardest point because I, I used to, even when I was doing these pancreation things, I was... Uh, striking people and they went down and I choked them. So I have a lot of submission because of this. But the thing is that me, I start my first MMA fight in 2015. So I had a lot of fight before, but that was Pancras. And I start 
my first MMA fight in 2015, and I didn't feel no, I, I, I didn't feel no problem on the ground or, uh, with the strike, with the ground and pound. I didn't feel no problem. But after when I joined UFC and I start to fight people who knows the the the, the style of ground and pound, that was going that, that that was a little bit harder. But I I never really have issues with the ground and pound. Just more with the wrestling, more with the wrestling because many Americans people are very good at wrestling. Oh, okay. So uh, so the re- so the wrestling was your hardest thing. And and how have you dealt with that? Do you think that um is that why you decided to move over here to Jackson Winkle Johns and start training is to try and tighten up your game because I I've been seeing you, I mean, especially in the Olivier Obama Mercier fight. That's you the were, point. <laughs> yeah, you were much improved even in that fight in your grappling. I was very impressed by what I saw. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it really all came together against Andrew Holbrook, who's a very, very tough grappler. But is that why you decided to move over here stateside is to improve your grappling? Or did you just want a better camp overall? So the thing is, like you said before, the MMA was illegal in France. So I, I just, I, 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 so I did my first MMA fight 2015. I went to the test and after... I, I did another uh, MMA fight, and after they asked me for UFC, the thing is that when I did my first fight with UFC, I lost very bad, very quick. But I wasn't ready. I just broke my hand on the fight before in November, so I was very mad. And I say, I, I can I just joined the UFC. I can train. I, I can train good in France. There is no wrestler. There is no boxer. So I have to go overseas, you know, because this is where everything happened this is where all the best gym in the world are and so i um i i, I finish uh, ending up in uh, uh, jackson wing but still after this i fought ober mercy who was a very good wrestler and i wasn't ready so we can see in the fight that i, I stopped many takedown but he, at the end it took me down and he took my energy off but after I work on that, and now I think I'm 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 good because I, I if you look all my fight I, I only fight Kazi uh, Saspo wrestler so that's kind of the hardest uh, opponent that you can have in a in a cage huh oh yes yes it is um but I think you've been uh been doing very well now there's a fight camp that I love the name escapes me at this point but Taylor Lapolis and Francis Ngannou. Uh, a, a, it's in Paris. A black mm-hmm. guy runs it. He's one of my. He, I think it's one of the best camps. Oh, uh, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I know. That's not one of the best camp. No, you don't think so? <laughs> I, I'm. I, this is not. I don't think so. I'm sure it's not. Well, I think their fighters do very well, though. You know, um, they've all done well in the UFC. Uh, who, what what trainer am I talking about? Uh, the black guy, the Lopez. Friend. Yes, yes, Fernand uh-huh. Lopez. Is, is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think now I, I I don't think because I know a friend of mine who train in his camp and I've talked with people and and they told me they don't like. So this is just like powder on your eyes, you know. Like you think I, that's good because they do a lot of media, a lot of videos and everything. But but after there is nothing. There is many people who leave his gym because he's too like he, he think he's dunking or something like this. I heard <laughs> that he yeah I heard that he really? even. Yeah, and I heard that even he, he makes the people call him Don at the at the gym, or something like this, <laughs> Don King, or I don't, I don't know. I, you know me, I'm a very simple person. I I don't like these type of things, you know. Ah, so you so, say he's not very humble. Uh, because I have seen his fighters in the UFC, and they all, especially for coming from France, Lapalus, Labu, Ngannou, they have all done very well for you know. Yeah, yeah. The I, I'm, 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 I'm not talking about the fighter. I'm talking about. Him and especially because I mean me, I have no problem with anybody. But I one time he, he he put a post on me, and I didn't like it because he tried to make his gym better, bringing me down with another fighter, who is uh, who are in uh, who is in the uh, USA, and I, I I didn't like it because me I never talk about him or his method or something like this. When I know uh, when I know the truth, man, I'm training in the best gym in the world, so I know what is good and what is not good. Huh? Ah, I see. So, well, oh man, I used to think that he was one of the better trainers 
no, out there. No. And cut you, the results. You, so you think he just got a hold of some good talent in Lapalus and in Ganu and those guys? Of course, man. Of course. Well, he never, he never create nothing. He never. The, the, if you can name me one fighter that he, that he, that he trained since he's young to UFC, I will tell you. Okay, but if you take Mike, Michael Lebou, Michael Lebou, he was already good. Everybody knows this. Lapilus, he was already good. Uh, Francis was already good. The, this is just like a trampoline, you know, a trampoline. What is a trampoline? Uh, like Trump. this is this is Trump. not ju- just Trump like. Plane? A, yeah, like a, in French, this is just like a bounce, you know? They came to oh, this. Oh, trampo- trampoline. Trampoline. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. This is just like a bounce. He's, he, he's, not, he's not training people since they are young and, and bring him his knowledge or something like this, like, like the, 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 the gym I am right now. You can see from uh, a teenager to adult, they, they build people and they get very good. You know what I mean? I see what you're saying. Okay, well, I learned something. Now, let's talk about your UFC career here for a while. Uh-huh. Got off to a rough start. Yeah. Um, three straight losses. How was that? How did you feel about um, maybe being labeled as being chinny, easy to knock out, and stuff like that? Like, what are your emotions about those three fights? What do you think went wrong? I know it went wrong in the Olivia Elba Mercier fight. But mm-hmm. in the Laprise and Packlin fights, you were caught and finished quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, how did how did that make you feel? Did you ever feel like hanging it up or anything? Or what what do you think? Why do you think your your first three or the two fights where you were knocked out? Why that happened the way it did? So um, the the first fight that I did that was a mistake from me because before this I was you know I was undefeated. Okay, I just lose one fight at the by majority decision at the tough against David Temur, who is a very tough fighter. You can see right now he's one of the best. Yes, I saw that fight. So, <clears throat> so, and I think for my part, that was a controversial uh, decision, but he was good and he beat me, That the result at the end. So, after I fought and I broke my hand and I didn't train and, and UFC called me, um, UFC called me 11 days before the fight against Pac Allen, and I and I didn't train during two three months, and I and I got a bit cocky, you know. I said, okay, I'm gonna beat him very easy with one hand. I said this to my uh, manager at this time, and that was a, a mistake for me. And so I accept this fight, and um, I lose. Uh, I lost very bad, and that was like kind of a punishment. And for me, that was re- really bad because I wasn't defeated. And after I say, oh, I just come to UFC, so I lost. Now the people are gonna say uh, everything I did before was uh, bullshit and everything. So I just try to show to everybody that I'm a good fighter. So I accept a fight two months after against Ober Mercy without preparation, and I and I fought and I lost. And same thing goes through my mind. And so I accept two months after a fight against Charles Lapriz, I have a very bad cutting and everything. So I was just, you know, my mind was uh, just, hey, I need to win to show everything, everything. So I didn't took my time. I just rushed to my first win. And I think that was my mistake. Ah, I see. So do you think that you have problems with your durability or your ability to, 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 you know, stay conscious, not get knocked out? Or do you think that you were just... It was more of a mental thing, and you were rushing yourself. No, no, no. I have no problem with my chin or something like this. I train every day here with, like, I spar with welterweight, middleweight, and there is a lot of UFC fighter, and I never even get knocked down or a bit dizzy on a punch. That just the thing is that there is a whole um, there is a whole uh, situation about fighting in UFC. You have to take care about the weight and everything, and. Uh, Oh, you hit and everything around the pressure and everything. And for my fight against uh, Pac Allen and Chad Lapriz, I had a very bad cutting. Even him, Chad Lapriz, when I fought him, he didn't make weight. And me, I forced myself to make weight. And I, that was the worst cutting I never did in all my life. So that was, I, I'm, I'm not saying that's an excuse because after we, I accept, they asked me if I want to do the fight and I say yes. But I just say you have to be very, uh, you have to have many precautions about when you fight, about your cutting, because you, when you lose that much water in your brain, after you can 
get just one punch and you go down because there is no not enough water in your brain. You know what I mean? I see. So you think that the uh, your lack of durability or chinniness was due to the extreme weight cut? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I never. I in all my life, I I never been. Uh, I take hard punch in training in fight and it never goes down. Even when I fought the, this man in Finland, he, he he knocked me down, but I never. I I, I recover very fast, so I never have this issue, and I will never have this kind of issue. Because you've improved your weight cutting. Yeah, of course. Now I go. Before I used to be. I used to be like between 180 and 185 a day before the a day before the uh, a day a week before the fight and now i use i i try to be uh, 170 175 like this i only have to cut like 10 50 pounds 15 pounds and, and that's already a lot you know so i see i see what you're saying so now you you want to try and cut less weight all right excellent good to know i've always wondered because a lot of people Especially in my fantasy circle, they always say, oh, t Ball Gucci, he's chinny, such and such and such and such. Yeah, he's chinny, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I bet. We're going we gonna to see now. Now I'm doing good. We're going to see if I'm chinny. And you can ask the trainer or people around me if I'm chinny. He's going to tell you if I'm not chinny at all. Okay, so what do you? I don't see any fights scheduled for you. When do you no. think your next fight is or where, where do you want it to be? I, I I don't know yet. I'm 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 talking right now to know because uh, uh, you know even if I did good in my last fight, I I still lose three fights before. So so I I need to talk with the matchmaker and see what he's uh, uh, going to do for me. But I think maybe I'm and I hope I'm gonna fight soon. Like I would like to fight in beginning of next year. That would okay. be good. Yeah, I would like him. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, stay on the line. I got to get some fight picks from you. But that's it. Thank you for your contribution. Merci beaucoup pour la contribution. I lay call. The Black Negro Jitsu. Thank you for your contribution to the School of Black Negro Jitsu, my friend. Um, if you have any shout outs in, in English, in French, go ahead and do those now. But stay on the line. I got to get your fight picks from you. Okay. No shout outs? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Well, thanks, T-Ball Gucci, for your contribution to the School of Black Negro Jitsu today.